Hello and welcome back to Tony Northeastern and a uh, special welcome to all you new subscribers who have joined me recently. Uh, I do apologise for my voice, so I haven't been too clever the last couple of days. Anyway, today is Sunday, it's nice and warm outside, sun is shining and uh, I thought I'd come up in the loft and do a little bit, but before I do that I'll uh, I'd like to mention a new subscriber who I found on YouTube uh, literally about a week or so ago called Duncan Merchant. Um, he's got a lovely little layout um, set during the war. Um, it's got an airfield and um, it's set in the Great Western region and uh, I've seen plenty of um, new ideas and tips which I'm most likely to borrow from you Duncan so yeah so if you want to have a look go and check him out it's Duncan Merchant right now then why are we over here at the steam depot well I've had lots of comments about these cobblestones and this is what they look like once they have been weathered and treated with coal and oil and they look absolutely smashing so I just thought I'd give you a quick preview of what the MPD may look like although I haven't got a set of pits over at the new depot but let's go and have a look at the depot now where it is okay this is how the depot is looking at the moment it's still a bit of a building site um, literally I mean pan back there's mess everywhere uh, I try to work tidily but uh, when, when you're trying to do a little job like this it just seems to get everywhere bits and pieces of plastic cut and what have you anyway a little issue I've come across you guys might be interesting right as you can see I have a joint here right on the corner and I've been following the large cobblestones all the way around and as I get to the corner here I have cut away these large cobblestones and obviously I've got to fill them with a couple of sets of small cobblestones but that's not the issue the issue is when I push it up against the track like so it goes away again now I have beveled the edges like I've done on all of them now the only thing I can think of is the first time I've come across this a fish plate there and on the other side pushing it away. Now so what I'll have to do, I'll have to mark it where the fish, fish plate is and cut a very very fine slither off the back and then push it up. And once that's done I can mark and measure a little infill for there. So I just thought I'd quickly, quickly show you that and you'll probably see the finished results later on so I do apologize for my voice I'm not so got a bit of a sore throat but anyhow right now what do you think it looks best the prefab office or the brick office let me know in the comments below. This one. Or this one. I mean, if that doesn't get used there, it will get used in this area. Because I've chosen it for this area. So there you go. Right. I should carry on doing a bit more. And then um, 
get back to you guys later. Okay, I've had a little bit of a tinker with regarding this fish plate. Now then, on the back edge, I've just scalloped away with a standing knife a little bit more. As you can see, you've got the normal fill I've been doing. Just a little bit deeper, and I haven't took away the front edge. And now, it fits without moving back. So I just thought I'd show you that, just in case you come across fish paint joints in your track when you're laying these cobbles. As an interesting feature to this uh, diesel yard, I've just added this redundant point here and followed on through using all the offcuts as if though there used to be a spur line here once upon a time. And then what happens is um, I shall carry on around the cobblestones this way. So it looks like they've been infilled at some point. Just an interesting feature. Right, I've been up here uh, a few hours now and I've got a little bit more done. Um, got four pieces down here. Just sort of highlights that little section there quite well so there used to be something there but they've cobbled it in and as I pan around I have infilled that gap there where the building's going to sit uh, which one I haven't quite made my mind up yet maybe you guys can help me um, the diesel tanks as you know go in there and as we go around so I've still got a little bit of fiddly bit to do there and as we come near to the front just about here where the pencil marks are um, there's got to be a roadway going into the fiddle yard itself so all the vehicles can access it but yeah it's it's a fiddly job and it takes it seems like it takes forever um, Um, I am thinking about extending this baseboard even further once the diesel yard's finished just so I can link a road up from there all the way around to Tyne Dog Station here but I can't come too far out this way because I have a fire access window and it's quite sunny out there at the moment and all the snow is gone so still a fair bit to do I have a little transformer here I'm going to put that over there on a concrete block and have a little wire mesh vest around it there's one thing I have to do before I put all the buildings into the diesel yard is to finish this bridge because between this edge and that edge is about three foot and I'll have to stretch over everything to reach it so I've got a cunning plan for that just a quick tip um, as you can see not all of my joints are perfect got a little bit of a gap there but in other places where the gaps haven't been too good if you keep putting in a little bit of uh, polyurethane cement now and again it fills the gap and it actually blends any bad joints together as you can see here and here just by putting in 
little bit of polyurethane cement. Just thought I'd show you that. Um, here was a particularly bad joint along there, but as you can see, just by filling it in, really does close the gaps. Okay, I've done a bit more, and uh, the diesel depot is almost finished regarding the cobblestones. Thank God, because it's taken me quite a while to get this far. And this area here will be the roadway in. Now, what I've done here is I've got some sandpaper, some P, P80 score, and just roughed up the cobbles in this area here to give them a bit more of a wear effect. Now, I'm not sure how this is going to turn out when I come to paint it. I'm hoping that it will look a lot, lot smoother than the rest of the cobble. So we'll, just, so we'll just have to wait and see once it's painted. Anyway, that's the virtually all the cobbles finished. I've left this area here because I've got an old water tower going there. And uh, this area here will probably be where the other office will go. And an additional feature is this transformer, this huge transformer, which will be adding power to some of the lights, maybe, so I don't know. But there's a concrete base. What is is a couple of bits of cardboard that I've used to um, do the diesel tanks with so I'll paint that a concrete colour and then that will go on there there will be a chain link fence going around it and some cables coming out which will probably go well supposedly go to any of the buildings I guess so it's coming along um, I haven't really had a chance to do as much as I'd like to have done but the space is only about three foot by two foot. Had a little bit of a tidy up as well. Right, I think that's all from me this week. Ah, no, no, it's not. Um, yesterday I went to the Basingstoke Railway Show and I bumped into Susanna Jacqueen of Ringwood South and Gary from Cheeky Tick with brought his son along, Callum and I met also Fred of the Wilbury line and Gary from Cheeky Tick gave me a sample of some of his amazing street litter now in there is some really tiny newspapers and some coke cans and some rubbish so thank you very much for that Gary I will use that on the layouts at some point but I won't be throwing it around as rubbish I'll be using it as um I might put those one of those cans in one of the figures hands or something and but yeah look at the detail to show you the scale of these things I'll have to put ruler alongside so it's literally 7mm across by 10mm high average size of a newspaper I guess but yeah thanks for that Gary and uh, thanks for watching bye